Hello everyone, my name is Thierry, and in this video, we will be exploring China throughout the ages. The research question I want everyone to keep in mind is, how has Paijiu reflected and shaped Chinese culture and society throughout history? So let's begin our journey first by providing some background information on Baijiu. Baijiu, a clear liquor distilled from Stockholm, has been produced and consumed in China for thousands of years. The process of Baijiu production is complex. Da Chu is the type of grain chu, which is made from raw wheat, barley, and or pea. It is a natural fermentation starter, especially for distilled liquor and traditional vinegar production. Powdered dachu, achieved by roll crushing, are used to inoculate cooked cereals, mainly sorghum, and this mixture is then fermented in soup jars or a cellar for about one month in order to carry on distillation. Experts estimate that the manufacture of dachu dates back to the Han Dynasty, which is from 221 BC to 207 AD. Both the manufacturing process and the end product, which is baijiu, still holds deep cultural significance in China till this day. This can be observed as the most famous baijiu in the world, Mao Tai, is still made from dachu. Another example of Baijiu holding deep cultural significance in China is the fact that even now, the annual production of Chinese liquor has been estimated at about 5 million metric tons per year. The longevity of Baijiu from the Han Dynasty to the modern day shows the continuity of Chinese tradition of drinking Baijiu, exemplifying that Baijiu is of deep cultural significance in China. Now let's teleport to the Tang Dynasty, which lasted from 690 AD to 705 AD, where poets such as Du Fu first introduced and described Baijiu in their poems. The poem, Qiang Village, written by Du Fu, mentions Lai Zhi He Shu Shou, Yi Jue Zhao Zhuang Zhu, Ru Jin Zhu Zhen Zhuo, Qi Yong Wei Chi Mu. Lai Zhi He Shu Shou expresses gratitude to millet, as they are used in the process of manufacturing Baijiu. Yi Jue Zhao Zhuang Zhu describes the fermentation process, a key step in producing Baijiu. Ru Jin Zhu Zhen Zhuo suggests that there is not en enough alcohol to enjoy. Qie Yong Wei Chi Mu implies that the Baijiu is used as a means of relaxation when the day has come to an end. Poetry was a highly revered art form in Tang China, and since a accomplished and widely respected poet such as Du Fu wrote about Baijiu, it shows that Baijiu is becoming a symbol deeply interwoven into the fabric of Chinese culture. It also shows Baijiu's rising popularity, as his presence started to shape Chinese culture while it became an integral part of their society. As we move along China's timeline, we reach the Song Dynasty, which lasted from 960 AD to 1279 AD. This painting is called Along the River During the Qingming Festival, Qingming Shang He Tu. This work of art provides a vivid snapshot of daily life and the landscape during the Song Dynasty. Let's focus on the middle part of this panoramic painting. We can see places selling food and wine. The flourishing Song Dynasty introduced the concept of eateries and restaurants. I can substantiate this claim with evidence from painting along the river during the Qingming festival, but also from the Dongjing Meng Hua Lu. Dongjing Meng Hua Lu is a memoir written in 1147 by Meng Yuanlao, and he wrote the book to reminisce his life in the Song capital. You can see in the Dongjing Meng Hua Lu that wine shops exist. They are all beautifully decorated too, indicating that they are profitable as the doorway of the wine shops in the capital are all miniature towers with knotted mini colored bunting, the gate of happiness. Being profitable and meticulously decorated would suggest a high number of visitors to such wine shops, which would also suggest that more people are consuming larger amounts of alcohol. Further an analysis of the Dongjing Meng Hua Lu shows there are not only high class wine houses, but also restaurants in the street of the capital. This information in Meng Yuanlao's memoir matches with the painting along the river during the Qingming festival, demonstrating that there was an increased consumption of alcohol due to the introduction of such wine houses and restaurants. This reflects the growing urbanization and commercialization from the 10th to 13th century China, and how it will proportionately relate to the normalization and increased consumption of alcohol such as Baijiu. Now we travel to the Yuan Dynasty, which spans from 1279 AD to 1368 AD. The Mongols ruled over China. The Chinese simply imitated the Mongol distilled liquors and began to make distilled liquors using their traditional brewing methods, calling it Shaojiu to distinguish the new products from Mongolian Arigi He. Thus, by the early Yuan times, a major breakthrough in the technology of wine distillation took place, a breakthrough that for the first time made distilled wine. Shaojiu is a stronger, more potent version of Baijiu, and that differentiated itself from earlier versions of Baijiu as recorded in the Tang poems as it represented a significant advancement of both technology and the art of alcohol production. In 2002, a 700-year-old spirit distillery was discovered in an ancient township south of Nanchang, Lidu, Jiangxi province. This shows that a large-scale distilled spirit production originated in the Yuan Dynasty, which sets the precedent for the large-scale consumption of Baijiu to this day. The Ben Tao Gangwu, or Compendium of Materia Medica, recorded detailed descriptions of Baijiu in the Ming Dynasty from the 14th to 17th century. The translated text reads, The making of burnt wine was not an ancient art. The technique was first developed in the Yuan times. Burnt wine, a direct translation from Xiaojiu, refers to the stronger Baijiu that could only be developed with the help of Mongol alcohol distilling technology. The Ben Cao Gangmu acknowledges the adaptation and innovation in Chinese brewing practices in response to foreign influences and changing technologies, and also illustrates the bountiful cultural exchanges between China and the world. I talked about the famous Mao Tai Baijiu earlier, now I will elaborate on its significance to China. 
Maltai Baijiu became a specialty because it won a prize in the 1915 Panama Pacific International Exposition that was held in the United States. It was the first international competition for the newly founded Republic of China. This resulted in the recognition of China in the modern global stage, and this gave China international recognition and an opportunity to continue relations with the United States and the rest of the world. This picture shows US President Richard Nixon and Chinese Premier Zhou Enlai hosting each other with Mao Tai at a banquet in Beijing, February 1972. This shows the importance of Mao Tai in Chinese culture as it represented China and showed China's willingness of friendship towards Western countries during the Cold War. Furthermore, the introduction of Mao Tai as China's national liquor linked Baijiu to a modern China, and this can be further seen in this advertisement. The spirit of China is imbued in the bottle of Mao Tai, inviting people all over the world to have a piece of China. Mao Tai is now valued at 2.7 trillion yuan in 2021, becoming an embodiment of China's massive capital, and a demonstration of China's economic growth, as shown in this newspaper article by CNN Business. We have now finally reached back to modern times, and I hope this journey had helped to visualize and demonstrate how Baijiu's evolution parallels major historical shifts in Chinese society. Thank you for watching!